Yes, next up is uh, Wayne from Nevada with the uh, Nevada Update. So for, for, those of, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Wayne Miller from Nevada, Department of Transportation. So quick facts of Nevada. You know, we're a, we're a pretty small state population rise, rural, very rural. If you've ever driven through Nevada, uh, you get a sense of how rural we are. I was trying to think in my head there of how many towns you drive through from the California border to the Utah border on I-80, and uh, I think it's a half a dozen, you know? Uh, there's probably 24 habitation cities in Nevada that have population, basically, and so we're, we're pretty sparse. Um, Department-wise, we have, equipment-wise, we, uh, we have a relatively small fleet, 2,601 vehicles are, are in our system, and of those, uh, 1,470 qualify for replacement, so we're 56% of our fleet qualifies for replacement. Uh, our last three bienniums, we've had seven and a half million dollars each year to replace 56% of our fleet. Now before that, um, for those of you who have been uh, in the group and, and my predecessors, we've, there were several years where we didn't have any money at all, there was none. Uh, our replacement budget was given to the uh, uh, Associated General Contractor so that they could stay in Nevada and not pull out and, and uh, pack up and go home. And, and so we used the replacement money to fund uh, outside repairs of the highways for the general contractors so that they could um, pay their employees, you know, stay in business. So it was a it was a, a partnership that we did, and so we, we didn't buy any equipment for, for several years. And some of these slides, I think you'll see uh, where, where we ended up because of, of the situation that we're in. And it's not necessarily decisions that were made, it's just the situation that we found ourselves in. And so as we go through some of these slides here, you'll, you'll kind of get a feel for, for, what we're, for what we're dealing with. So there's one of our frontline rotaries. <clears throat> I think that's a 76, 1976 version. Here's, here's, here's one of our newer ones. <laughs> I think that's a 96 version. That's the same one. That's a different one. You know, so, and I, I've got the snow removal equipment up first, the heavy snow removal equipment up, because, well, that's, that's anyway. So, uh, I'll, get, I'll get back to the, to, to the snow removal, because it, it adds greatly to the where we are today from where we were a couple years back. You know, so you recognize that that's a, that's a top kick, right? They, they haven't done that since, like, 92 or something. You know, we all face the same situations. You know, we've got salt and sand, and... And it, it kind of does a job on the equipment, and so we, we find ourselves with, I'm sure you, a lot of, hopefully you guys' trucks look like ours, hopefully we're not doing something totally wrong, you know, but uh, we, you know, and so if you recognize a truck too, right, that's a, they haven't made that truck in, in a long, long time, and the majority of our trucks in our fleet are International 2574s, and that was a great truck, they just, they just don't make it anymore. There's some of our loaders, right? <laughs> So the, these, these photos are actually taken at, at our shop in, in Reno. Um, and these slides here, the, the loaders and, and this truck here, now don't laugh at me, these are our emergency response units. They're doing a good job, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. And so this obviously isn't a Volvo, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? You know, and so, so I show, I show some of these is because, you know, a lot of times the weather isn't the only thing we're dealing with. This, this one here, I don't know why they didn't move the cone when they took the photo. This, this, this was a rollover. There's the, the Ford, he pulled, in, he pulled in front of traffic on the highway. This guy, he obviously had a problem. That, that's not a Volvo either. Where do we go from here, right? So this is the, this is the situation we find ourselves in. 
you know, and so we, and we have to deal with it, uh, right, because the, the equipment has to be maintained, and so I've got some photos of, let's see what we got, okay, so, so this is that truck. So risk management, because of the age of this truck, our risk management wouldn't replace it or give us to repair it, so we had out of my shop budget, we were, we're fixing that truck. We, we had to buy a, uh, obviously we had to buy a cab. That truck's gonna be a, a pretty new 2006 International. Some photos of our, of our guys at work and, and, and how we're doing to maintain some of the stuff that we have. So we got a mix there, you know, new and, new and old. And this was all one day. We took these photos in the shop one day. There's a, there's a couple of my happy crew there, you know, and so, and I, so this guy here pointing, he's like, get out of my weld shop. I'm too busy for you guys to take photos. I, I got to go to work. Get out of here. So this, these were our last, these were 2016s, I think, Jeff, Yes. 2016s. And, and we have this photo in here because my shop foreman wanted to show the uh, natural environment for a Peterbilt. Using the shop to maintain the equipment, what we've done is we went from we went from the first slides to before we started buying equipment again, we we were doing some rebuild stuff. And so this truck here used to be a dump truck, and uh, it was it was a, a turn in. And so we decided, hey, you know, we could use a crane truck in the shop. And so we took the dump truck and. We turned it into a crane truck. We had the crane laying around, so it's not like we spent a bunch of money. We had the body laying around. We had to chop it off and, and do some modifications to it, but we did that stuff in, in, in house. That's a, we, had, we had to stretch the frame rails, we, so we bought a new set of frames. Uh, it's got all new running gear. Uh, and, so, and people say, you know, especially the dealers were like, well, why are you wasting all your money on, on a 2000 International 2574? And, and I try to explain that I can't buy equipment. I don't have money in that. And you know, you, government, right? You've got 10 pots of money and you can't mingle any of those 10 pots, right? So what you're buying, if you're buying new equipment, it's gotta come from this specific pot. It can't come from any of the other pots. But, so we couldn't buy any new equipment, but they made my replacement pot, a my repair pot a little bigger. So I was able to fund some of these rebuild stuff and, and, and I don't have the exact numbers of how many we did, but we did five or six of those John Deere loaders. We stripped them down and made them basically brand new 544Es. Uh, these dump trucks, we probably did close to 10 dump trucks. Uh, we did some specialty stuff. We built the crane truck. We built a, a couple water trucks. Here's, here's a couple photos. Of a, that's that's a that's a water truck. You know everything, the axles and the housings, uh, and some of the ancillary stuff, air tanks and stuff. I think even the air tanks are brand new. But basically, the frame is new. We've got a replacement motor, transmission, differentials, obviously all brakes. Cabs are stripped. I mean everything down to nuts, bolts. Yes. Are you changing your cab color to white? We, yes, we are. So we did that in, so the, the, that Peterbilt in its natural habitat, <clears throat> that, was a, that was a 2016. In 2017, we, we went to white. So everything, everything is, well, I wouldn't say everything is white. Uh, our truck is white, the yellow iron. So we used to pay to paint John Deere loaders school bus yellow. We used to have to pay to do that. And you know, and we're like sitting down and we're scratching our heads, well, 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 why are we doing that? Why, why would we, and we made them take them back and paint them and bring them back school bus yellow because that was the spec. So as we know, white is cheaper, right? I think it looks better, it holds up better. So, so yes, we, we have changed our, our truck to, to white.
there's a finished product. That's a brand new 2000 2574 international water truck. Without modern emissions. Without modern emissions. Which is a good thing. That's where we were before uh, 2016. So we, we're, you know, the economy's picked <coughs> back up. Uh, we started to get some replacement money. We started buying some trucks. Uh, we, uh, Jeff and I, we've changed our specs so that we don't have hangar queens anymore, right? And so we were doing business a little differently. Now back to the original with the rotaries and all the rotaries. So what, what drove that is, like Colorado, we have a new governor. And with a new governor, typically a, a new director comes along because those are appointed positions. You know, and they're typically political. So we've got a new, a new governor and a new director. Because of those changes, we needed a new deputy director and three assistant directors and a bunch of division heads. But we're starting to fill that stuff back up again. And so with the new director and the new governor and a left-leaning legislature, we thought, hey, now's the time to write. Now's the time is right. We'll strike the iron while it's hot. And so we said, and last year we had, we had a heck of a winter last year. Um, record snowfall on the eastern side of the Sierra. Uh, most of the rotary fleet that's uh, outside of our shop uh, wasn't operable. They had to borrow some of our stuff and we had to rent a, ro a, a rotary to try to get through the winter. And we said, hey, man, we really, we're in tough shape. And so we went to the legislature and the uh, intern finance committee and we said, we need $8.2 million just to buy six new rotaries. And we thought it was a stretch and it, it was a snap of a finger. It, it, it was so easy, it was unbelievable. And so then we said, hey, if that was so easy, on a regular <laughs> replacement budget, let's see if we can't get, sure, we'll take our seven and a half million for our regular replacement, but on top of that, we need two new airplanes and, and we need a striper and we need two more rotaries and we need a bridge truck and we need all this stuff. And so we were granted $31 million for this extra equipment above and beyond our seven and a half, just the replacement stuff. So, so we're, we're doing much better. That was, yeah, so, right. So the seven and a half million is, is our biennium replacement. So I've got this fiscal 20, fiscal 21, seven and a half million dollars just for normal replacement. Seven and a half million each year or for the two years? Each year. Each year. Each year. The other stuff was a one-time purchase, just fiscal 20 to buy. So if I wanted to buy a bridge truck out of my seven and a half million, what if there's one district that doesn't get any money, right? <clears throat> and so that's how we were able to justify it. Um, airplanes are expensive too. Yeah, the the Beechcraft is seven point eight million, and and the Piata, yeah, Piata is uh, quite quite a bit more. So, so here's where we're at today. So the these the the things that you're showing here, I think these were these are FY nineteen. Some of them, some of the big trucks are FY. Uh, 18, we just got delivery of some of those, and we'll, we'll discuss some of that why. And so here's another thing that we're doing, Jeff and I, uh, we're, we're expanding our horizons. You know, before 2019, you'd never see a Jeep in the fleet. And they're cheaper than Explorers quite a bit. And I love it. It's, that's, that's, it's a great, that's a great vehicle. Is every vehicle branded that way? With the stripes and the and the door. Yep. Working. Yeah. Yeah. So that that and uh, it's all reflective, and we, we manufacture that. That's another thing that equipment division does is we're the sign manufacturer for the department. All the highway signs come out of come out of our, our division, and uh, they, they they make all of our decals for us. Some of the things that we've been able to do, we, we we've expanded, and so that spec that we were talking about the other day. 
we were able to buy this truck and some of the other trucks kind of off the same basic general spec. Basic truck going in, getting its stripes. I don't think they have any other photos of the actual regular cab, but, but you get the idea, right? We put our shop, we put the stripes on, we put on all the light duty fleet, we're doing all the lights. We do all the interior, all, all the uh, extra add-ons on all the light duty fleet. We, we do that ourselves. So here's a, here's a new transport tractor that we got. This is for Elko to replace the one that was all crunched up, I think. Well, wait, I think we probably did spec aluminum wheels on the transport tractor. That's way to say it. Yeah. Yeah, on, on, on the transport tractor, that, that was a spec. So just to comment on that, um, we are now standard with aluminum wheels on all our plow trucks. Oh, even plow trucks, too. Because we have gone through and have done some tests with aluminum wheels, and we will have to pull steel wheels off, re-power coat, re-blast within a three-year period, and aluminum wheels haven't been touched. And you know, we did that, too. So when they would change it, we'd take all the steel rim cores, and then we just we worked out with uh, one of the tire dealers, and he took care of all the powder coating. And we just he created a you know an inventory of remanufactured rims, if you will, or powder coated, so everything always came out <coughs> looking new. And just to let you know, on our truck bit, we check aluminum wheels is a six hundred dollar charge over steel, no brand, so it's next to nothing. Yeah, right. No. That's the truck getting upfitted in the, in the shop, right alongside all the rest of the stuff. There's the cabin chassis. So we're, this is a, you know what a Flanagan is? It's a special truck for the sign shop guys out on the highway, and it's got a platform that goes, a scissor that goes up and then extends out with the platform so that they could change the signs on the highway. The body was, um, from an older truck that got replaced, we got a new cabin chassis, we're rebuilding the body <clears throat> and we're putting it back on the truck. We would buy a new Flanagan, but he doesn't like us anymore and won't sell anything to us. So there's one of our 2018 dumps, right? They're turnkey, we, we, get, them, we get them just the way, well, without the stripes, obviously. Um, but that's, that's the way we're getting them from the bodybuilders. That showed up the day we were taking photos. It is orange. So this is the back that we talked about where he tried to get the lighter duty model in, and we caught it on the spec review when he was turning in his bid, and this is actually what we wanted. We expected that color. Well, so what we, we, we is, manufacture so standard color. color. So when we do yellow iron now. We just let it be the manufacturer's yeah. OEM yeah. color. So yeah. So so in case it shows up like this, I don't have to send it back and say, no, you got to paint it school bus yellow. So I worked for the Komatsu dealer when I sold them a D, uh, you know, a D155, and it came in Komatsu yellow, and the superintendent at that time made us take it back and paint the entire. Yeah. Mike Steer, take, take it back and paint it because it's not in the spec, right? Well, I don't want to deal with that. So manufacturer's standard color on yellow iron. We've got green John Deere's running around, you know. There's another view of the FY18. It's a good looking truck, huh? Okay. So now we're fast forwarding to FY19. That's the way they're coming from the bodybuilder. We've decided that we want to do a test and uh, we're going to upfit the sander and the lights and that stuff ourselves. They'll come with a truck and a plow. Well, and I'll clarify that wing plow gets bought separately. All the mounts and the hydraulics are upfitted at the Trucks, so all we got to do is mount the wing and the wing is shipped directly to us. So our sanders are showing up just like this. Now here's the slide that I, we, we, somehow we missed a slide. I wanted to show you what the end of this Henderson looked like when we were done with it, but it didn't show up. But anyway, it looks remarkably similar 
to that because that's all our design. The washout tubes, we put four by four tubes underneath this bottom of the sander to be able to hose out underneath the, the truck so the salt doesn't, of course these, these are now stainless, but uh, uh, when we had mild steel beds, they would you know, rust out like the very first photos. But, so th th this is our design and what we, I wanted to show you what we're doing with that, but it didn't show up. Where are you putting your washout tube? Underneath, dr directly underneath the, the sander. So you loop it around inside? It's just two tubes going front to back and welded to the, welded to the sander. And there's nothing in between the two tubes so you can wash it out. So you're lifting it up basically with a tube underneath. The yep, yeah we're, li yeah, we're lifting the sand this bottom of the sander spreader up off the bottom of the dump bed by by that much. So our district maintenance stations have built a couple of wash stations with overheads in the wash station so it, it, it cleans the truck from the sides and the top and everything and then they can lift it up and the operator can then continue to wash up the bed. So now if you're paying attention we took these photos the same day. So in my possession I've got trucks that we ordered for 2018 and trucks that I ordered in 2019 are on the ground at the same time. Now, what we've done is we've also sped up our process. My fiscal year starts like most of, on July 1st. I want to be ready when they give me seven and a half million dollars. I want to be able to spend it pretty dang quick. I don't want to wait. See, the last guys, we waited on the fiscal 18 trucks. We waited a while to get the bid out on the street. Yeah, so now they're showing up at the same time. They ordered the light duty fleet first and then do all the big stuff. And we reverse that process because this obviously takes much longer to get. Yeah, I can get pickups in, you know, in, in no time. What's your average turnaround time for a dump by the time you order the cab and chassis and, and give it to the customer? Well, let's see, we're starting to get the 19s out of Rough Fitter right now. We ordered those late last year. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, we ordered our 19s late last year and they're already showing up to our Rough Fitter right now. Um, and now they're just waiting for the uh, dump beds to be delivered and such. And we're already starting to take, like, we got our, our one transport. We're starting to get stuff a little quicker. So, what, six months, it seems like? It just seems forever, especially the way they were doing it before. No one ever got their snow removal equipment in the year you needed it. You know, in that same year. So this really, the crews are all way happier getting the equipment way sooner. What we did in 18 is uh, we needed three water trucks. So we took that spec, the cab, the chassis, and we went out to bid for two complete turnkey water trucks and a cabin chassis and a tank separate. So you can see Mac, these are two different locations. Mac got the bid for the... So these are mobile lab trailers. This was a design that we came up with several years back. Uh, it's really big, really heavy. This one's got three mobile home axles on it. They used 19 tires to get it from Reno to Hawthorne. Terrible, right? I'm like, we, we, we gotta do something. So if there's any success that I've ever had as superintendent, this is it. So we took that design and we said, let's design it to where we can haul it with one of our tractors. And we put trailer brakes under it, truck axles, trailer axles, built the frame so that it'll haul you know, fifth wheel setup. It's set up just like a 50 foot semi trailer. We can haul those things anywhere. The other one, I had to contract that out. I mean, because these things are big. That photo doesn't do this thing justice. It's, it's, they're, they're massive. Then we, they, the guys were messing around. They just wanted to show some, some, some of the unusual stuff that we've got. You guys recognize that, Caltrans? So, 
So this truck, so we, we picked up this from a used truck dealer here this last year. Our guys in, in, in Elk, we have one tunnel in Nevada, right, that has to be washed, and we're like, our truck is really, really wore out, our tunnel washer, which we got from Caltrans in 1989. It was a 79 Unimog that Caltrans got rid of, and we picked it up. This is an 89 International, and we feel that that International replaced the Unimog at Caltrans. And so it's doing the same duty for us in Nevada. We should, huh? Well, and we didn't. Yeah. So they've been looking for work with these for years, and they wanted us okay. to be built. Here's how you put everything together in one shot. all I got. Thank you very much. I don't know how to shut that off there. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.